your stats class. Okay, first off, you made a really good decision to take statistics because in the 21st century, everybody's got to know a little bit about statistics. It's, it's just part of literacy. So the fact that you're looking at this video, good decision on your part. So let's just jump right into this. Uh, you're probably wondering, what is statistics anyway? Well, I'll tell you. Statistics is the study of data. Okay? You got all this data out there in the world. How do you make sense of it? How do you how do you somehow get meaning from all this data? Well, you use statistics. Statistics is also the study of variation. Okay? And you're thinking, variation of what? Well, variation of the data. Variation, you see variation in populations. For example, we're not all the same height. We don't have all the same uh, hair color, same eye color, same skin color. Uh, we're not all the same gender. Uh, so there's variation in all of that. You also get variations in measurements. If I, uh, if I hand somebody a long rope and I say, measure that, and then I hand 10 other people the same long rope, measure that, they'll probably get 10 slightly different measurements because there's little differences in, a, a, in a, well, there's, there's errors. There's tiny errors that they're making each time. So you get variation that way. And then there's also variation that is due purely to chance. If I want to know, is this coin fair or not? Meaning, will I get heads or tails 50% of the time? Uh, well, you start flipping. Sometimes you'll get heads, sometimes you'll get tails. That's variation right there, or rolling a die. Sometimes you get one, sometimes you get six, sometimes you get three, four, five. Uh, so again, that's just variation due purely to chance. So. Two type of statistics. We're going to, two types of statistics we're going to look at. Uh, one is come on, there we go. One is descriptive statistics, and one is inferential statistics. Now, descript, descriptive statistics, also called data analysis, it's exactly what it sounds like. Okay, uh, both of these are really good names. It's describing statistics. It's analyzing data. Okay, it's making sense of data through two. Uh, uh, actions, summarizing and illustrating. Okay? Inferential statistics is what you use when you don't know uh, information about the entire population, but you only have information about a sample of the population, one portion of the population. Okay? That's what you that's when you use inferential statistics. Fall semester, spring semester. Okay? Uh, now, um, there we go. Let me show you kind of what inferential statistics looks like. Uh, let's say we're looking at all the residents of Texas. And uh, there they are, okay, there's all the residents of Texas. And let's say I'm wondering how tall people are. And so there is, we use the Greek letter mu, it's like the Greek M uh, for mean. That's the average height, so the mean height of all residents in Texas. There is a mean height of all residents in Texas. I don't know what it is. Why don't I know what it is? Because I haven't lined up every single person who lives in Texas and then measured how tall they are and, uh, and then taken that average. That would take a really long time and it would actually be a waste of time. Okay? And so instead, instead of doing that, what I do is I take a little chunk here. Okay? And I'm going to say, this little chunk, this is going to represent the entire state of Texas. This is my sample. And this sample is going to represent the entire population. So instead of taking the mean height of the entire population, I take the mean height of the sample. So, uh, so, and we call this X bar. That's the symbol we usually use for it. So X bar is the average height of this particular sample of residents of Texas. And X bar is, of course, an estimate of mu. Okay? So the whole purpose of doing, of taking a sample is to use it as a representative of the entire population and then to say, well, this sample here, this, this average here, is going to be an estimate of this average here. Now, how good an estimate is it? That's why you take statistics. That's why you learn about the rules of inferential statistics, to find out just how good your estimate is. Um, so, if it's possible to measure the whole population, let's say you wanted to measure the, uh, the average height of people in your class. Well, that's not so hard. There's not that many of you. So, if it's possible to do that, you take what's called a census. That's when you measure the whole population. Okay? And that measurement is called a parameter. Okay? So parameters describe the population. Mu is an example of such a parameter. Okay? 
If it's impossible to measure the entire population, then you take a sample. And the measurement that you take, for example, x bar, is called a statistic. So parameters describe populations, statistics describe samples, okay? And the statistic is an estimate of the parameter, okay? This part up here, this is what we call descriptive statistics. And this part down here, this is what we call inferential statistics. Uh, so, when you're studying inferential statistics, you get to answer questions like, if I survey 50 people and 40 of them say that they prefer chocolate over vanilla ice cream, can I really assume that most people in the world prefer chocolate over vanilla ice cream? Or, possibly, uh, is it likely that half the world loves vanilla and I just got a weird batch of people? I don't know. This is why you study statistics. You can actually answer that question. Uh, or, if 10 men and 40 women apply for five openings in a company, uh, all the candidates are equally qualified, and only men are hired, is this evidence of gender discrimination? I don't know. Kind of looks like it, but it's hard to say. This is why you study statistics, because we can actually give a numerical answer to that, answer, uh, to that question. Uh, or, if I survey 500 people, and 48% of them say that they plan to vote in the next election, what does that mean? Okay? Does that mean exactly 48% of the entire population is going to vote? Or does it mean that like between 47 and 49% is going to vote? What exactly is my margin of error here? And how certain can I be that the actual percentage is going to be within that margin of error? Again, you study statistics and it'll answer that question for you. Uh, so, what are we going to study in this class? Well, we already said we're going to study descriptive statistics, and we're going to study inferential statistics. There's actually two more little uh, uh, subjects that come in between there uh, that kind of bridge the gap between them. Data gathering. If you're going to analyze data, let's get good data, okay? You get bad data, you get a bad analysis. So it's really, really essential that we get good data, and so we're going to learn how one collects data responsibly and gets a good analysis from it. And then probability. We have to use probability rules to, uh, uh, to uh, use our inferential statistics. So it's kind of like the vocabulary, the vocabulary we're going to use uh, to, to get there. All right? And uh, so before I leave you, let's talk a little bit about data. Okay? Now you can, uh, you can categorize data into two types. There is quantitative data and categorical data. What is quantitative data? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like, okay? It's numerical data. The height of a tree, the number of letters in your last name, the ounces of cup and, uh, the ounces of a, 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 in, a, in a cup of coffee, okay? Those, were, those are all described by a number. That's quantitative data. Categorical data means not quantitative, okay? Uh, so that would be, if I ask a bunch of people, what's your favorite color? That's categorical data. Uh, do you support the death penalty or not? That's categorical data. Uh, what breed of dog is this? And I get a whole bunch of dogs and, I, and I, uh, I classify them by breeds. That's categorical data. What's your zip code? And the reason I, I included zip code is that uh, that's actually a number, but it's categorical data. Because quantitative data has to be data that's used like a number. Meaning you would want to add the numbers together for some reason, or you might want to uh, take the average of the numbers for some reason. I can see taking the average, I would be interested in the average height of a tree, or the average number of letters in the last name, or the average ounces of, uh, uh, the average number of ounces in a cup of coffee. I would not at all be interested in the average of a bunch of zip codes. That would, that makes no sense, okay? Because it's categorical data. Uh, now, you can also look at two types of data in another way, and that is by saying there's univariate data and bivariate data. Okay, uni, one, bi, two. I think you know what this is going to mean, okay? So univariate data describes a single characteristic of, uh, of uh, the individuals or the subjects that we're uh, looking at. And bivariate data describes two characteristics of the subject or individual. And uh, actually, if you want to uh, uh, get technical, there's not two types of data, but three types of data, and uh, the third one would be multivariate data, 
where you have more than two characteristics. In this class, we're going to be looking at univariate data and bivariate data. In your next statistics class, you're going to be looking at multivariate data. Okay? Speaking about next, this video is over now. In the next video, we're going to look at analysis of categorical variables.